And what is up, y'all? JPTV3000, same YouTube channel as always. Today, I'm going to be showing y'all my pump that I operate at work. Y'all have probably seen this plenty of times. Uh, I'm going to let y'all see a little bit some of the messages and stuff that we, that we last had when we were working. Driver's side, hole five, shooting water out of it. Uh, driver's side, more than likely. I wasn't, I was off when they were last running this. Check PSI, uh, C pump. That looks like my handwriting because other people don't write stuff about the C pump, PSI. Uh, place packing in twice in one day, hole number one. They should have redid everything. When they, when they did the packing in this, it's probably not greasy. More than likely that's the problem. Shooting water out, grease problem or wrong packing. Hold one wrong packing or it's not greasing. One, one, one of the two. It's packing in hole number two. Uh, passenger side, driver side, driver side, two speed switches from hole low break off. Yep, we had this problem right here before with the other pump. Set adjust dick engine valves engine service so yep this is this is my equipment man got so much reach so much rich deep history man with me and this pump so i gotta get on out of here i'll show y'all what the tub looks like come on this is the tub where you mix your water chemicals chemicals would be your that bag does not need to be off in there but I'm not dressed to get off in there and try and fool with get, getting that sucker out of there this is your lube oil here has a pump on top of that or should have a pump on top of that this right here is your box keep your tools and stuff in um, this right here is your greaser electronic system it, it actually needs a seal to go back around here Hopefully y'all can see that. It needs a seal. That's why it does that. This is supposed to be watertight. This electronics off in there. In there, and you don't want them getting wet. Um, hold on, just a minute. This right here is like I said, your greaser, packing lube. What you saw in there on the window is a result of this right here probably not greasing properly. And the way you check this is you watch these two gauges. This is your driver's side gauge, that's your passenger side gauge. And you will make sure you see this, this needle coming on and going off. Coming on and going off every so often depending on how fast and how much rate that you're pumping. Uh, these right here are your paddles. That's a paddle. That's a paddle. Spins and mixes the water around with the chemicals as it's pumping down hole. These are your hydraulic lines up here. These run your hydraulics to and from it and gives you your different speeds. These boxes up here on the top are your open and close valves. Those mirrors are so you can sit in there and look at those mirrors and see you got one on each side. And both of these pumps are pretty much the same. Uh, that's an e-coil over there next to that one. Uh, we run the e-coil from time to time. I mean, if that's what the customer wants, that's what we give them. Uh, but we're gonna go look at these valves right here. Hold on. When I was talking about these boxes up here, right there in the middle, those, those are your valves. They're they open and close. They open and close that way, left to right. It's gonna be open. Back and forward, it's gonna be closed. Cause the ho the hoses are coming out like this and like this. So, when you look at this on here, what you're looking at is these exact same valves. Open is up, close is down. You'll have a red indicator light that comes on. And you've got other piping and stuff up underneath this pump and comes out. This is how you cut it off. Your passenger side, driver's side, emergency kill, instant neutral, power, instant neutral. Break on, break off, break off, break on. Usually that brake is going to always be on unless you're starting it from in here with the PTO kicked in on the tractor. Uh, this is your digital, this is your manual digital readout. 
This one has a different one from the other one. The other one has a electronic digital readout and a manual digital readout. So this is reading directly from the engine what the engine is doing. So is get out of here. So is so is this side. Driver side, passenger side. This is your throttle. All the way to the left is uh, pretty much zero. All the way to the right is wide open. You always come down, throttle down, till you come out of lockup. How do you know whether you're in lockup or not? There's a light, there's a, tran there's a transmission, and a transmission converter PSI. There's a dog on that in here, and he just will not stop. Uh, when this light comes on, you'll see this gauge right here come up. Same thing on this side. When this light comes on, you'll see this gauge right here come up. And otherwise, you're not in lockup. Sometimes you can hear it, but when it's noisy, out on location, you can't. This is your curbside boost pump. We're gonna go look at that boost pump in a minute and I'll show y'all what that looks like. Boost pump is here. These are two manual valves, hand valves that you can open and close yourself. Um, these are pipes that run up underneath the tub. That's what this is. This right here is your tub. And you pump through there, goes into your head, and you pump the high pressure fluid down hole, going straight. We're going to go look at some more of this. It's hot in here. So, hold on a minute. And, yeah, it's hot. Hold on. Alright, now that we're down here. All of those valves up there that you can see, they are open. In their open position. So, these two lines right here are so that you can inject directly chemicals if you want to. These, are these little one-inch wing knockoffs. This is your four, four inch hose. Yeah, four inch hoses. These are your manual valves that you saw up there that are behind your seat pump. This is your seat pump. So you will bring your water in directly to one of these. Now there's two ways you could do it. You can not use your seat pump and you can have water go straight into your tub. That, that'll be gravity fed, but you have to make sure you have the right height of water so that the water can be pulled in by the gravity and go into your tub. When using the sea pump, the sea pump is going to pull the water either directly from here, pushing it into your tub, then sending it out through this other line to both sides of your fluid head. And this is a Kerr. I think the other side is an SPM. We have two of these pumps, so I, I'm not, I, I don't remember exactly. Um, got your Robosto heater. Uh, work lights. Come on down here, we'll, we'll look at some more stuff. Um, this is your fluid head. This is your low pressure side. This is your high pressure side. That right there is your... Uh, pop off your manual pop off you have to set that by hand and the only way to do that is you have to unloosen that bottom bolt loosen the top one out then after you loosen the top one out you tighten the bottom one back up and then you go in there you, re you pressure test again it works better when you have two people to do it versus one this right here so that you can set your pressure your uh, manual pressure gauge in there that's what this is i don't know if you can see that Uh, I'm not going to get up on top of there because I don't feel like it. This is your grease line so that your grease can come out and go into a bucket. That's for your chains. Diesel tank. This is your... All of this right here is your, this is your transfer in, your power in, fluid in, high pressure in. Fluid comes out through here. Comes all the way into this line. All the way into this line. And you have an outlet where you can pump out here but you could pump out here. This is this is the way we usually pump out when we're pumping. Your transmission oil. Make sure you check this. On the inside of here is a gauge that you can view from the other side. Uh, I'll probably remember that. Make sure you grease these either every either at the end of every job or every other well you do. Make sure you grease these. Really, really good. 
that'll that'll keep the longevity of your equipment these right here are racks for the winter we put curtains on them and that keeps the heat in and it works amazing it really it really works amazing hydraulics hydraulic pump uh this is a big 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 detroit engine still got buckets up there we need to get down come down here to back and this is where the magic happens right here this is your discharge that's what this is i'm gonna step back so y'all can get a full view this is your driver's side discharge. This is your passenger side discharge. This right here is your bleed off. You can pump through here, but more than likely you're never gonna pump through here ever because this is your bleed off. You're never gonna pump through here. It's always gonna be here. It's gonna be here. Uh, make sure you grease these, any valves that you have, including these two valves. You use high pressure grease. That's what these fittings right here are for. That's for high pressure, that's for high pressure grease. You want to grease these every other well will work fine make sure you check your tire pressures make sure all your lights work because you have to transport this if you're a pump operator you're going to be driving this uh i keep these these three inch uh seals for the iron that goes on right here that's what this is goes right there I always keep some right there because usually when we're rigging in iron, we're coming from here down to the ground and we're building the manifold going out. That way, if we need some, bam, we got them right there. Uh, same thing on this side. This one has an automatic chugger pump for pumping your coolant up into the radiator. All that right there is radiator. That's all radiator. And some companies don't want you getting up there on the top. I always climb up there to the top. It's the fast way to do it. Get it out the way and be done with it. Come on around here. This right here is your uh, grounding cable. Uh, you can also see your radiator up in here. As I was saying, the phone cut off. I think it got a little warm. Uh, this is your passenger side. Same thing as the driver's side. The transmission, there it is. That's that little gauge that I was telling you about. And if you look up underneath there, there's one right, can you see it? So there it is. You Right there. That way you can look at it. You can see it. Other than that, you, you got your dipstick on this side. This one right here has a uh, coolant filter, fuel, fuel filter, fuel filter, fuel filter, and I don't know if you can see that. That's an oil filter. On the other side, it's mounted like like right here. Yep, and it's a pain to get to. Uh, it's your air dryer. This is your alcohol pod in the winter. Make sure this is full of alcohol. I know I'm yelling, but there's a reason for that. You'll be you'll be froze up and want nobody to know what, what the heck is going on. Uh, you got a big hydraulic tank up there that you have to keep full of full of uh, hydraulic fluid. Oh yeah, this is something I also know if you ever run one of these. There is a where is it at? There's a valve to there's a valve to shut off your coolant going to your cab when you're swapping over from uh winter to summertime where is that stupid valve at? it might be on the other side on this one okay i know this pump it's or it might be up underneath the cab but anyway there's a yellow valve that you have to cut off if you want good good air conditioning these are your master on and off switches on both sides. Make sure they're, they're, they're off when you're storing the pump like this. You have a box to put tools and stuff in. Make sure you get a clamp or hook or lock to put on here. So as you're going down the highway, they don't come loose and your tools and stuff come up out of there. Hold on a minute. I ain't, I ain't gonna worry about that. But I do need to check to make sure that they got all the stuff out. Which is the main part, part of coming back here. Okay, they got everything out. That was it. I was looking for some parts and I, and I couldn't find them and I knew where they should have been at. Now, depending on what I find else to go with this video, we're going to start getting into the fluid head, how this works, what all we do with it and to it. And yeah that's about it same thing make sure you agree grease your drive shaft and everything and we're gonna keep on going this is the other pump 
not really gonna check this out. Make sure you number these left to right. One, two, three, four, five. So anytime you do any maintenance on any of them, you can go one, two, three, four, five. I did uh I did packing or I did seats and valves on one, two, and three. And that way you'll know and the next crew will know that okay you did that and they can only have to do five and one. Same thing, make sure you keep track of your maintenance. Let you see what this drive shaft looks like. This is your boost pressure for your power in. If this sucker's hitting zero, you about to blow this in this power in up. And that's about thirty thousand dollars right there. So this this stuff is most definitely meant to be taken seriously and meant to be you know meant to do what you're supposed to do with it the way you're supposed to do with it and uh this is jp tv 3000 hopefully y'all are looking up at me and not not looking down at me but hopefully y'all out there making it man i'll see y'all when i see y'all y'all stay positive jp tv 3000 peace